Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is a standalone video, which I do almost none of. And I don't know why. It's just I don't I really am not that comfortable talking directly to the camera, but I'm gonna just, <laughs> I'm gonna try my best. If you notice on the kill stream, usually I'm looking at the screen or I'm looking at the guest or looking over here. Every once in a while I'll look directly at the camera, maybe for effect or for like one line delivery or whatever. But as far as staring straight at the camera, that's a skill that I've always been envious of. Like when you see a Tucker Carlson or like a professional news anchor, news reader, whatever you want to call it, uh, and you'll see how their eyes are just trained directly. Obviously, you're not, there's nobody there. I'm talking to a fucking machine. Uh, so it is a real skill to just like get yourself in the mindset of this is a person. Anyway, I won't get into the meta, but I'll just explain why you don't see that many uh, standalone videos from me. But this is one of them right here. That's why you get this unscripted bullshit because it's also not scripted. So I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. That's not true. I do have a certain idea what I'm going to talk about. And it's my event in Dallas this Saturday night, the Killstream Kingpin Invitational, April 2nd. I don't know what the time. I was about to say 8 p.m. Eastern. That's when the debate's going to start between Harrison Smith and Destiny, scheduled to take place there live in person in Dallas, Texas. Killstream.live slash bowl. Tickets are still there. Uh, so I've been talking about that for many weeks the promo's probably depressed a little bit because I've had so much stuff going on. My daughter was born last week, a uh, little baby Rosanna, uh, so that was pretty exciting and stuff like that. But I, if you've been following my stuff at all, you've seen me talk about the Killstream Kingpin Invitational for sure. April 2nd, as I mentioned, this Saturday. Like, I'm literally leaving to go to Dallas tomorrow. Like, this is not, um, it's not a far away event anymore. Like, it's really about to happen. Anyway. As part of my event week, uh, I talked about this before. Uh, you are here, Elijah Schaefer, in the, I guess, the Blaze Studios uh, in general, maybe, um, are there in Dallas, right? So that's where they film his show. And uh, I'd known Elijah before, not like known, known, but he had messaged me here and there, uh, a little couple little DMs or something like that. Uh, never really talked to him beyond that. And, uh, but did know of him. We follow each other on Twitter. Not buddies, though, right? Uh, but kind of knew of him. Also, my chair. What the fuck? How did this fucker sink? Okay, there we go. <laughs> I need to get a new chair. Uh, yeah, it's because uh, it's the five one height. That's what it is. God, don't get me started. But anyway, uh, <laughs> now they'll clip that and say that's an admission to being five one, but whatever. Uh, anyway. Rakeda went on his show in January. Obviously, Rakeda used to be a, fr you know, I would say friend, associate at least, uh, who came on the show all the time. Uh, we had a falling out. I won't get into all that. I think uh, some of you already know about it, so I won't get into it. Uh, anyway, he went on uh, Schaefer's show, and I guess, um, I guess somebody sent in a super chat or something. Anyway, he went on a rant, trashing me basically. Uh, I heard about it. Because somebody tagged me on Twitter and said, Hey, Ralph, what's going on, man? This guy trashed you on. <laughs> you know how it goes. Some of you do, anyway. And so I was like, Oh, hey, fuck this. You know, you should let me come on your show, basically. And so he did. He's like, Yeah, that's cool. I'd love to have you on. Um, he's like, What day is going to be here? I told him. We ended up setting up the day. He asked me that Thursday or Friday. Uh, and Friday was April 1st. So naturally, I said, "Well, it has to be April first, just for, just for laughs." Again, my events on April second, uh, but it's April Fool's Day, right? So this has to be this has to be the day that we do it. Uh, and so, for many reasons, one of the reasons is I thought something might come up to derail it, and I'll get into what has come up to derail it here in a bit. Um, but anyway, um, so we picked April first. We started getting closer to the day, obviously. The other day, um, I started, I was like, man, it just doesn't, it's just not feeling right. You know what I mean? Like, it's just something, it's just something about this is not feeling up to par. Like, there's some kind of, I don't know, man. I've been in this for a while, and it just didn't feel like an up and up interview. Like, it, it seemed to be, um... It's it, there seemed to be some uh, something lurking there, and I don't know why, but I just had that feeling. I was talking with May, and I even, um, you know, her whole family was there, and I was like, "Man, this thing just doesn't feel right. Like this, this, this thing is not feeling right. I think I'm gonna cancel." 
And so I thought about it, and I canceled. I don't remember if it was Monday morning or Sunday night. And I was like, nah. And I gave a reason. I was like, ah, yeah, you know, my daughter just got born and was just born, whatever. Got born. I was just born. And, uh, you know, I kind of set my schedule back, and I need to be at the bowling alley on Friday anyway. Kind of make sure things go smooth on Saturday, which is actually true. I mean, honestly, I need to be doing event shit on Friday, not shows that have nothing to do with my shit. But. Anyway, so, and I didn't even get a response back. I just put out on Twitter, I was like, hey, I'm out. And then he put out a tweet, Elijah Schaefer, saying, oh, it's not, it's nothing we did, right? Uh, Ralph backed out. We didn't cancel. And um, I was like, yeah, you guys have always been cool. Why? Yeah, you didn't cancel. I pulled out, right? Um, but that tweet in and of itself was another, like, one of those moments. Because I was like... What is he, why is he even saying that? Nobody, I, I wouldn't think anybody would, nobody was making that claim, right? I don't know, were they? Like, I, I wasn't saying that. Certainly, maybe he thought they would. I don't know. Um, but anyway, that kind of raised my ire. Then today, or earlier tonight, whatever, I heard what really happened. Uh, and what really happened is, and I was right, just, I didn't know what it was. I didn't, I wasn't sure what they had plotted, but quartering's big dumbass. He's a moron. I mean, I think we all know that. Um, but I mean, he's good at, you know, hoovering up the shekels. I mean, I will give him credit there. He's very good at that. But as far as like, you know, a guy you want involved on your plot or something like that, you know, he's the first dumbass that's going to get you sent to prison. Like this is a. Not a very, uh, not a very wise motherfucker. You know, he doesn't have very many street smarts. So anyway, I'll, sh- I'll show you this clip, and uh, I don't know. I should have, I should have, I should have known this is what they had planned. I just knew something was up. Uh, and by the way, shout out to Elijah Schaefer trying to pull a fast one. I- I'm going to talk about him. I'm trying to decide if I should put it in this video. Or maybe uh, just tell you to watch the kill stream later tonight with Lord Miles Rutledge. But I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I should just keep it separate from the kill stream because it is it is pretty explosive. What I was told about uh, about Elijah. I mean, I think I told some of it on Twitter already. I'm not sure. Uh, but let me play this clip real quick. Well, I was I didn't want to fuck up your timeline. And I can dip too, but um, I, I didn't know if you were gonna do some a gun up a gun date. Or not? I, well, he's yeah. he was slated to go on the "You Are Here" podcast. I heard with April you, right? First. What was it? He supposed to go on with you? Well, what? Uh, no, he was going. Now, by on the way, with no. Schaefer and- by the way, now see, this is the thing. Had they asked me, "Hey, do you want to go on with Ricada?" I mean, I might have said no, but I definitely would have thought about it because I was already going on there, knowing this was going to be a spectacle, knowing every fucking hater alive was going to be sending in crazy super chats. Uh, you know, trying to fuck with me with their usual bullshit, i.e. lies, uh, and personal life, you know, some of the stuff, you know, relationship stuff and some of that, some of that's not lies, you know, some of the shit that's trying to fuck with you on a personal level, but it's still, you know, you know, you're going to be subjected to that. Right. Uh, and so I knew that going in, but it's like. If you wanted me to talk to Ricada, why didn't you guys pitch that? If Ricada wanted to do something like that, why didn't he pitch it? Um, I'm most likely, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I, I won't say that I would have done it for sure. Cause I don't want to lie. If I was going to be a liar, I would like Ricada is here in a second. I would just sit here and say, I think he already did lie in the video. I'm not sure. I'll restart it. If I was going to be a liar like him, I would just say, Oh yeah, I for sure would have done it. I don't know if I for sure would have done it, but I was trying to create interest for my event the next night anyway. Um, hoping maybe, you know, get some extra people local too. you know, pop into the to that bowling alley there. But, uh, you know, there's a, there's a chance I would have done it just for that reason. I mean, that's kind of was the idea of going on this show, but uh, that's not uh, what it was all about. I don't know what it was. I don't know why I got the feeling that something was up, uh, but I guess it's just that Ralph Amell sixth sense. I, that's what, uh, <laughs> that's what Pantsu said. I'm not sure what it was, but uh I did call it. I just didn't know what it was going to be. But anyway, I'll play the video now, and I won't talk. Well, I was—I didn't want to fuck up your timeline. And I can dip too, but um, I, I didn't know if you were going to do some a gun up a gun date or not. I well, he's yeah. he was slated to go on the "You Are Here" podcast. I heard with April you, right? First. What wasn't he supposed to go on with you? 
Well, uh, no, he was going on with Elijah Schaefer and Sidney Watson. Whoa. I feel like I thought he was, you were going to do you were going to do a show Corey? with them. No. Uh, I, I, okay. Loser. By the way, Corey's got a lot of nerve to talk about guns and this shit. I saw this big nigga walking around the other day. He looked like Grimace. Like this small fucker had a like. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll leave that there. I well. Nick, I feel I don't like know. he's. I feel like he's. No, no. I feel like I'm not that. I feel like I'm not crazy. I feel like. There was something You're not sad. crazy. Okay. You're not right, crazy. Yeah, I was, <laughs> yeah, like, it was supposed to be a surprise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it was supposed to be a surprise. So they were going to spring a trap on me there, which by the way, this is something that does get under my skin a little bit, because if you've watched the kill stream for years, as I hope some of you have, you know that I don't pull that tactic. And there's been many, many, many cases where that was a possibility. And people wanted me, were begging me to do that. The closest that ever came was when we had Jim come on when we were ha- when we had Sargon on as a guest the first time. Well, it wasn't the first time, it was actually the second or third time, but that was those are old kill streams from years ago. Like 2015. Um but anyway, uh but if you watch that show, he actually okay's the interaction with Jim where he's like, "Yeah, sure, if he would talk or whatever, if I would I would talk to him or whatever." And then Jim comes in, and that's the closest you could ever see uh, of me doing that. I don't think there's really any other examples of it happening. Um, so I, I don't know. We'd have to go through the record, but um, there's countless examples of me refusing to do it. Uh, and it's just not something I do because I don't think it builds trust with your guests. That's why I, I just don't think um, – the guest is it's just it doesn't build a good trust level as a host uh and i think you know no matter you know i do have a crazy life there's no doubt about that um but i think even um with all that insanity people know me as a fair host and that i actually take the hosting part uh of the gig fairly seriously i mean you know, people might not think that with, you know, some of the jokes and, you know, some of the stuff we've done on the show, but um, I actually, I take that part fairly seriously. Now, there have been some times where I was a little inebriated in the past or what have you. Uh, maybe the serious, no, seriousness level may have dropped here or there, but... Uh, <laughs> it, was, oh, man, yeah, like, it was supposed to be a surprise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. surprise. <laughs> Nothing now, notice how easily Ricada lied throughout the beginning, just with ease. Just wanted that to be, and of course he's a lawyer, so not a huge shock, I guess. But and, oh, I accidentally. Oh, okay, shit. Okay. But he, uh, he oh, what? quartering blew the plot. There he is. Anyway, um, that's what happened, and so it was some kind of sixth sense. Sixth sense there. I don't know something. Something triggered in my brain. It was like something's up here, uh, and it ended up being that. But what's funny is. A couple weeks before, I was out uh, with Corinne and some other people. I won't go into that. Other people. Uh, and Folklore Americana happened to be there. And I asked him if I had to use this, could I could I say all this? Because I felt like at first I was going to go on there and it was like, well, it might be a setup, but I'm going to have you know, this in my back pocket. Now, I didn't know that until I had this dinner because he started talking about Elijah Schaefer. And he started saying that uh, Elijah Schaefer used to, like, make out with men in his presence, uh, grope men. That, by the way, I thought when he told me Elijah Schaefer had a wife, he t- first thing he said something about, I know for a fact Elijah Schaefer's wife is a beard. And I said, well, how do you, how do you know that? First off, that's not what I said. The first thing I said was, I thought he was openly gay or, you know, some kind of like I had always just assumed he was gay for the longest. And then I had to look it up and I was like, okay, I don't see where it says he's gay for sure. Um, But apparently he wasn't uh, openly gay. Um, I just assumed that. Uh, And he actually has a wife. That he married back in 2020. Uh, And Folklore Americana, who worked with him, was sitting here telling me, 
that he's seen this guy make out with men, that he's seen him, uh, you know, grab dude's ass and this and that. And I'm like, okay, well, I mean, that part didn't surprise me. I guess now that I think about it, the part that surprised me the most was not that revelation. It was the revelation that he had a wife because I was like, what the fuck? I thought this guy was like, you know, from the LGBTQ California conservative uh, wing of the GOP. Uh, but uh, apparently he doesn't claim it openly. So he told me that. He also told me uh, that basically he was the one who kind of helped make this guy get famous uh, through his work uh, pretty much and that Elijah got hired by the blaze and owed him a bunch of money. And so I guess he had one of his cameras or whatever. And he's like, well, I'll just, you know, I'll just keep this camera, you know, as payment. And dude was like, Oh man, that's a really expensive camera. Let's meet up and talk about it. Come on, you know, let's work something out. Just bring the camera. Let's work something out. So they had a meeting, uh, and then when he got there, he started yelling about dude stealing his camera and Oh my God, you can't, you can't take it, and da, da 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 And so he ended up just letting him have the camera and just, like, dropping the whole thing. Like, not taking his money either and just getting fucked over. So I'm thinking that is one reason probably this story came out to me. Uh, and I was hearing all this, and I was like, well, first off, do, do I have your permission to tell this? Like, if he goes, like, if something goes awry. So if I'd showed up on Friday... And they had brought Rakeda out or Woodwork or something like that. This is what would have been dropped, like, right after. Now, I wasn't going to do it for our Super Chats or, you know, people throwing shit. Because you expect that. I expected that going in, right? By the way, I'm used to doing the kill stream, so I'm... <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I was talking about at the beginning. I'm looking here. So I wasn't going to... I had it in my mind. I was like, so I had this information... And there's another part of it, too, I'll tell you. Uh, I had this information. I was like, well, this is in reserve if there's some kind of, you know, foul play. I don't consider Super Chats talking shit, even if they got lies in them. Uh, you can't control a Super Chat, right? Like, I mean, I'd be the last one to cry about that. Now, you can control who gets exposed to them or whatever, but I've exposed people to plenty of Super Chats, so it's like... I, I would be the last. Now, I could cho choose whether to go on the show or not. But um, as far as, you know, whining about that, that's not going to be – that's not going to be something that I would be able to be do, sit here and do credibly, right? Um, but I still – I don't know. I just felt like they had something – now, I ended up being right, like we saw. But it was just like I want to have this in case something goes sideways. And so it ended up going sideways, obviously. Um, but – it, you know, I'd already, I'd already caught it, but I still want to put this information out. So there was another part of it where apparently he said he pulled him over and he wanted to have like a very serious conversation. I keep forgetting too, by the way, he wanted to, you know, like talk to him. I guess he was trying to keep him quiet about some of the ass grabbing and men kissing that he had man kissing <laughs> that he had seen him do. Uh, and he was like, well, I had, you know, I guess he said he'd been gang raped by a bunch of dudes repeatedly gang raped, by the way, over the course of like some of his teen years, I guess. Uh, and, uh, the guy's response was, well, how is it gang rape? If you kept going back to like repeatedly get gang raped, quote unquote, sounded more like he was just participating in like gay sex, uh, sessions pretty much from the way it was described. <laughs> That's, I think that was, uh, I think that was his interlocutor's point as well. Like, uh, how is this, how are you, how are you getting raped if you were partaking? Now, again, I don't know. Maybe he was, maybe he did, uh, something like that happen. I couldn't say, I haven't heard the original story. Uh, but it sounded more like he just used to be gay quote unquote used to be. Uh and now he's trying to turn over a new grift leaf uh there on the blaze. And again, I didn't want to go in on all this because I, you know, he's been cool to some people that I like or whatever. Had them on their show on his show. But if you're gonna get dirty with me, uh I'm just gonna lay it all out on the table. I don't give a fuck. So and he's still planning to, you know, have Ricardo on there Friday anyway, so it's like fuck you. You're a piece of shit. Uh that's that's kinda how I feel about it. Uh and so that's that's never going to change. If you're trying to play me, um, I'm just going to have to let the chips fall where they may. 
on that. Um, now, as far as anything else, I mean, I don't know. Those are, I don't know if those are big or not gay group sex and, um, you know, just blatant homosexuality. I thought he was already gay. So it might not be, I think a lot of people think he's gay too. So I don't even know if this is like huge information. I'm pretty sure his wife probably knows too. So this might not be like the epic. <laughs> I don't know. It depends uh, on your point of view. I heard somebody on Twitter say he started laughing when he heard it. I guess he was watching a show one day and Elijah said something about his wife and the dude just went like a oh, one of these. Like what the fuck? Uh, but yeah, that's that's how he found out. So. Anyway, I guess take it or leave it. Now, there was, oh, yeah, The Blaze. I did want to note out The Blaze was one of the uh, major publications there that thanked, uh, what was it, not thanked, but congratulated Dave Rubin uh, and whatever his boyfriend's name is, husband, uh, on their little surrogate double-double there, uh, which was appalling. I Honestly, I was still, I'm still in shock with that one because I still think about when I pulled it up, I just expected to see one baby, and there were actually two. And my mom was just like, first off, what the fuck? Second off, that was like half a million dollars worth of baby right there. Like, what the... F you would be stunned at what these motherfuckers pay. Anyway, it's crazy. Because me and Pansy looked it up, and I thought it was like 50 grand, 100 grand. No, it's like 200, 300 grand. Like, it's big money. Anyway. Um, I guess take it or leave it, but that's what happened with the... Um, that's what happened with the You Are Here stuff. Uh, and I look forward to to their show on Friday. I'm, I'm sure it'll be great. I'll be in Dallas, Texas, killstream.live slash bowl. Check that out. I'll have a lot of friends there. I won't name them now because I'm just keeping this separate uh, from everything else. I want to make a standalone video, uh, and I probably will talk about it on stream too, but this is my standalone video, so I hope you enjoyed it, and one day I will remember to look at that camera when I make standalone videos.